Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Woof. 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 Oh, no. Woof. <laughs> woof, 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 woof. Let him keep woof, going. Woof, woof, woof. No, 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 let him keep going. Woof. Oh, wait, I didn't realize we were starting. I no, that was, yeah, you finally just unmuted me. <laughs> Hi, I'm Nathan Simmons. <laughs> I'm Dustin Goes to Hollywood. And I'm going to apologize right up front for the fact that we don't have a female guest on this episode. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Oh, well, I think compared to uh, other ep- like other movies we've done similarly, like, yeah, I think this one is probably the least offensive in terms of not having a, a female presence on the show. <laughs> uh, it's it's a sliding scale. I, I think, yeah, I think that this is just more of a the, the existential crisis yeah. of <laughs> the millennial uh, adults. Yeah, <laughs> I actually hung out with previous guests from the show on such episodes as Fantastic Beast Mm -hmm. and Promising Young Woman, Jenny, Mm -hmm. um, reminded her that Nathan is such a nice guy. (laughs) Oh, good. And she actually asked, she's like, oh, are you going to record while you're here? I was like, yeah, yeah, Uh uh, we're going to do an episode tomorrow. She's like, oh, cool, what movie are you doing? I was like, oh, Vivarium. She's like, who's the guest? (laughs) We don't have one. She was like, oh, Matt, oh, no. Well, okay, okay. Okay, so we're on the defensive already with this episode, so that's a good place to start. Which, I mean, DC, I mean, you have kids. Mm -hmm. How accurate is this movie? (laughs) Well, the screaming until you literally fill the bowl up to just the right amount of milk in the cornflakes. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. This is, this feels like a documentary, almost. (laughs) Just to be clear, this movie does take place in Florida, right? Yes, oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. No. I don't think houses are that pristine in Florida. <laughs> well, we all we do all drive on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. Um, the uh, I will say I don't. <sighs> I kind of fuck with this movie. You, you I went... kind of fuck with this movie. Well, OK, I, I, I didn't enjoy my time with it. Yeah, but uh, I I've been thinking about it since I finished watching it. And I'm I'm I don't know. I'm kind of I'm ready to like d- dig in. Well, let's take the temperature of the room then. Yeah. Mally, how are you on this movie? This was your pick. First of all, yeah. Why? <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, why the why? Why the fuck not? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> why reopen that wound? Is my question. Yes. <laughs> you know. Um. Why not? Okay. A little bit of a masochism, but okay. <laughs> well, and here's here's the worst part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This was one of the first movies I watched when quarantine started. Fuck. Oof. That thing is rough. Yeah. Like, I think we were like a week or two into quarantine when this movie came out. Mm -hmm. I was like, let's fucking go. (laughs) You guys remember like eight days into lockdown Mm -hmm. and like Ellen was crying on her couch. (laughs) Like, it's never going to end. And Gal Gadot was singing. Oh, God. (laughs) Like, I I remember that. Like, all the memes going around being like, oh, like the SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs going insane. Like, day 32. And I'm like, guys. This we're getting this for the long haul. This is not going to be funny. Ex- yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, I remember at the time, like my parents were like, OK, so like, you know, if we could plan like our our, you know, a trip in the winter. And I was like, there's not going to be there's not going to be any fucking there trips. Is no winter. <laughs> <There's> no, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, can, I, can we also, before we get too deep into this, can, mm-hmm. can we do an audible show of hands? Mm. Aud- audio, audio. I, I said audible, an audible version of showing hands. <laughs> Who knew what the word Bavaria meant? Because I will admit I did not. I, I had to look it up as well. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> oh, so y'all don't just read the dictionary? I, I guess I just, I never made it to V. Isn't that what looking <laughs> up a definition is, Melly? <laughs> He's got you there. Now he's like, I'm up to the W's now. <laughs> Big old W boy sitting over here. Ah, uh, bro, I'm on D. I read that shit backwards. <laughs> oh, interesting. I like that strategy. Yeah, yeah. He, he's reading the manga version of the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> dictionary of the house husband. It reads very differently. So I guess we should probably say the name of the episode, mm. the name of the movie we're covering this week. We're talking about Vivarium. The Sorin. <laughs> oh. uh, from 2019. This is, I believe, is this a French movie? movie does anyone know i thought it, it was shot in copenhagen oh okay oh. well never mind 
I don't, I'm not familiar with the director. Mm-hmm. No. Copenhagen? I don't, I don't know countries. International co-production between Ireland, Denmark, and Belgium. Also, uh, there's I counted 14 oh my God. production logos at the time. It, it was never ended. It never ended. <laughs> I was cackling by the time it got to like the, the eighth one. And yeah. then I just, I legitimately like had tears in my eyes. I felt like I was watching The Room. Well, and it's like when you watch the movie, it's like, it's not a big budget. What yeah. they each donate? 20 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, Priscilla had seen this movie before, and we watched it together this time for my first viewing. We should have had her on this episode. Oh, that's good. Maybe I can get her in here to get, like give her brief thoughts about it later. I I would love to hear her thoughts on this. Absolutely. This is the one time I will hear <laughs> Priscilla's thoughts. But as we were sitting down to watch the movie, and like yeah, like like you said, Nathan, like the eighth card come up, I was like, "There's no <laughs> fucking way there's going to be another one." And then it kept happening. And it got to the point where they were sharing screens yes. too, like like like. Like you had sold ads in your school yearbook. And I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> I thought I thought it was part of the joke of the movie. Yeah. Like, it, it never ends. It's just going to keep going. <laughs> I was pretty hype when the Saban Films logo popped up because I thought we were going to get some Power Rangers in this bitch. <laughs> Dude, I was like, are we going to see some fucking Power Rangers in this movie? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I couldn't. I lost my mind at the amount of production cards. Holy shit. This was actually a secret Zordon origin <laughs> film. <laughs> this is, you know, if it was revealed at the end that Rita Repulsa was pulling all the strings all along, I would not be surprised. <laughs> and it's Elizabeth Banks's Rita Repulsa. They were raising Alpha 5 and at the end they just put him in armor. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they have to kill him first so they can put him in a robot body. Yeah. And then, he, then he goes, ay, 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 measure me. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I, I know we're going to talk about it, but so many of my notes are just, fuck this kid. <laughs> oh, man. So many notes. But I, yeah, before we get there, some people may not be familiar with this movie. So guys, I mean, Or, you know what? They may not be familiar with our podcast either. So mm. if this is your first time tuning in, uh, what a weird choice for an episode. To pick. <laughs> well, never seen this movie. Never heard this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Press play. Uh, we are the Silver Lightings Playlist. We are a podcast that watches movies such as Vivarium uh, that do not end in a typical happily ever after uh, fa- uh, fashion, especially this movie like holy shit what the complete opposite of happily ever after right but we like to watch films such as uh as bavarium and we like to find the good in them the silver lining for the characters at the end of the film just a little something uh something that we can find to be like hey there's a little bit of beacon of hope at the end of this movie Mm -hmm. uh good luck right gentlemen is all i have to say (laughs) oh i got one i got one locked and fucking loaded i have one it's dog shit i'm gonna be honest with you Mm -hmm. (laughs) up front but yeah that's the goal of the show we're not very good at it. I'll go ahead and let you know that. It's kind of the crutch, really, of the whole thing. And sure. it's barely a part of the show. So, Nathan, yeah. was this your first watch? This was. Okay. Um, I, I've been nervous about this movie since since Mally put it on the schedule because he legitimately, I think it was maybe the first one you put on the schedule, dude. And like yeah. the, the description was just, this gave me an existential crisis. <laughs> and as we've, uh, oh, through the season, you've told, you've like given us a little... Uh, Wizard of Oz style peek behind the curtain and, and told us like <laughs> that this just like really uh, put you in a bad way. So I've, I've been nervous about this and I I got to say like uh, I'm good. This no, <laughs> no, 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 this hit me in ways I I didn't expect um, and like touched on a, a lot of things that I show me on the doll where the movie touched you, Nathan, <laughs> my soul. Um, <laughs> we'll we'll we we will get into it. Yeah, uh, there's yeah, lots to unpack here. And uh, like like you said, like you hinted up top, uh, I don't know that we're equipped to unpack all of it, but we will do our best. Yeah, uh, this is my first watch, too. And yeah, I mean, <sighs> I didn't know what this movie was. I didn't watch the trailer. The only thing I knew about it was Emoji Poots was in it and Jesse Eisenberg was in it and it was a baby. That's all I knew. Yeah. Which, I mean, if if she's in a movie, I'm watching it. Absolutely. Same. Absolutely. Uh, she's never, she's never bad. Like, she's so, like, she's so good. Never not good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But no, I, I didn't know what to expect from this movie. I didn't understand the tone right away. Mm-hmm. I, I was laughing at stuff that made me uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I realized, oh, that's the whole movie. I'm just going to be uncomfortable. I felt a pit in my stomach the whole time I was watching this. Oh, like, for I, sure. Yeah. Yeah. But for me, it was it was like, OK, I, I get kind of what's happening here. I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure the movie's going to tell me. And it 
kind of does um but yeah it deals with some themes that i i feel like i've already you know had well trotted uh territory before in other films so Mm -hmm. it wasn't i don't know for me it wasn't like a eye-opening mind fuck of a movie it was i was more impatient than anything (laughs) not to the movie's uh discredit this is still a fantastically made movie don't get me wrong i agree but yeah i just become i became frustrated really early on and I, I know I'm going to get shit for it already, so I'm going to get it out here now. I know. I felt more in line with Jesse Eisenberg's character than I did with uh, Imogen Poot's character. Uh, wow. Of course you did. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Man. I mean, not not in their relationship, but in terms of dealing with the situation at hand. Yeah. Like, d- we'll get into it, but like, yeah, when he was like, we got to suffocate this kid in the car. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you do. Yeah, you 100% do. <laughs> I mean, for me... I mean, maybe it's also just the fact that I, I genuinely, I, I, I just, I don't like Jesse Eisenberg. Me either. And, and so I, I feel like maybe I'm just also predisposed to being like, fuck this guy from like the mo- the first moment. Yeah. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. There's. But he has a much more subdued performance in this movie than he typically does. That's true. I will. I, I agree. But yeah. I think that there are. Well, and he also just kind of becomes a non-character for the second half of the movie. But mm-hmm. the. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like there are moments where I, I can see where both of them are coming from. But most of the time I am. I am on this journey with Gemma, like 100 percent. OK, I, I think it for me, it was just that. I was looking at everything logically versus what I would probably feel in the moment. Yeah. You know, and I, they don't really give you a whole lot of their relationship up front. So yeah. I didn't really understand like how long they've been together. That's my biggest knock against this movie. You know, we'll, we'll get into it. But sure. like, I, I feel like there are things where I'm like, I really needed to see where they were during the previous, you know, three months or whatever. Yeah. Just to like, I... There's so much that is just like, oh, and here's another weird thing that we haven't gotten to see them get used to yet. <laughs> yeah, well, the time jumps in this movie yeah. are drastic. Yep. So, um, Mally, you had said <laughs> beforehand, and our clue for last week was kind of this as well, that this movie had, was kind of a pivotal moment in a relationship of yours. And I'm assuming you've seen it at least one other time before this, or was this your second watch? This was my second time seeing the movie. Okay. Mm. I have not. I have watched this movie exactly twice. <laughs> okay. This is this is buried all over it. Oh, really? Oh, wow. You really think it's th- it's on the level of buried? I mean, uh, <laughs> <laughs> what a, what a pregnant pause there. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's I I I guess I could see where you would see how you could see it that way, but mm-hmm. for me, I don't know. I again, because the way I took the movie in, I was just more impatient than really absorbing everything. I can but yeah, feel that. Tell me about the first time you saw it. So I watched this movie with a girl I was dating at the beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. And I just remember like, as we were watching the movie, I was like, like, I was just sitting there thinking to myself, like, I would go fuck nuts. Oh, yeah. I was forced to raise a little monster child. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Well, let me ask you this. Were you guys in lockdown together? Kind of. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, not like we didn't live together or anything but like mm-hmm. she was one of the only people like i saw during lockdown gotcha but yeah like i don't know it was just one of those things where like i think it was like the whole like like kind of like the theme of this movie like being trapped mm-hmm. in something you want to get out of and the like, expectations it, yeah and it yeah. like all kind of came at me i was like oh mm-hmm. that would be a fucking bummer <laughs> yeah i feel you i like i said i think my problem with the movie is that i'm not in a position like that like sure. i've been with priscilla for almost eight years now mm-hmm. yeah you're you've definitely been trapped <laughs> <laughs> well we've been on both sides of the coast mm. and so it's like i don't know i'm I, t- like i said i was coming at this movie from a logical standpoint mm. and you know priscilla and i didn't really have a conversation about after where she was just like eh, i would raise the baby and i'm like Mm-mm, that's not even a baby right so <laughs> i don't know it, it, I, there was more logical discussions and i think that emotional ones well and it's hitting at things that aren't entirely literal either like yeah. the you know that i mean i i've <laughs> there not to get like too personal but like yeah. there's a there's a way like having a conversation with your you know if you're if you're in a relationship and your your partner doesn't want to have kids mm-hmm. and you do and like the there there's you know it hits at things like that and th- and and notions of responsibility versus what's expected of you versus what you want out of life yeah and, uh this it's uh it i feel like Gemma and what's his fuck uh tom, tom i think is his name yeah they they represent you know every side of of those arguments and just kind of like that yeah like you said mally those feelings of being trapped or the feelings of like 
you know, oh, if I keep putting in the work, things will get better for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's uh, I don't know this this movie like really fucked with my head a little bit. <laughs> well, um, and then the the bonus part of that story mm. is so we finished watching the movie and then like we just kind of like it, you know, credits rolled and I was like, oh, fuck, oh, that was crazy. Uh, and like I got up, like walked to the fridge, got me like a drink. And then, like, walk back out and, like, step back down. I'm like, yeah, that was fucking crazy, right? Blah, blah, <laughs> And then, like, she just kind of looked at me. She's like, so where do you see us going? Oh, boy. Oh, no. Not right then, no. Like, fucking what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if she looked at you and said, I want to have kids? Fuck. Oh, I just looked at, I just, like, pointed at the TV. I was like, not there. Yeah. <laughs> sure. That's, that's the best answer you could possibly get. <laughs> but your TV was doing like a weird brain, like black and white test pattern. Oh no, it was it was showing Roku City. So he was like, we can't live there. <laughs> Roku City. <laughs> I, I feel like I would try to raise the kid. At least uh, I'd make a valiant effort. I don't know. that That's, that's like that's the point, but it's not a kid. It's I know. It's not I a know, kid. I get, I get it. But also if my instructions were, you know, do this and you get to go home. But yeah. also, I don't know. I, I feel like... I've always wanted to be a dad, so maybe I would take this monster under my wing. I don't know. <laughs> well, there's there's a lot to unpack with the actual plot of this movie. So sure. before we get there, I, I think it should it should be uh, we should we should try our best to explain what the movie is about and then what the actual plot is mm -hmm. before because there are probably people that are going to listen to this episode that haven't seen the movie mm -hmm. and i'm going to try my best and Mally, since you've seen it twice you can probably correct me and nathan if you can as well sure so uh jim and tom are in a relationship and they go to uh a, a realtor to try to find a place to live like mm -hmm. to get a house together wait hang on first right off the top we got to address the fact that Tom is a handyman. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's the most ridiculous part of the movie. <laughs> oh, I, 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 yes. No, no, I, I want to get into the, that part when we actually get to the sketch on the film. I'm just trying to lay out the, the basics. That'd be like me playing a farmer. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking pale, doughy ass, like, no, no dirt under my nails. Oh, I'm sure you look great in plaid, Nathan. Thanks, man. I do. <laughs> or some overalls for sure. Yeah. I do. No, I, I, I just want to get the bare bones so I know what, that we're all on the same page because there are some parts that can be a little muddied, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they're they're looking for a house. They go to this this place that this realtor shows them. He dips out. They get stuck in this world where they can't leave. Mm -hmm. A little kid gets dropped off. They the box says raise the kid and uh, you'll be released. It does. It says raise the child and be released, which mm -hmm. is one hundred percent a song title by Norma Jean, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but they have to do that, and then shit just goes sideways from there. But what's actually happening and you guys tell me if i'm misreading this is mm. this is like a simulation put in place by literal aliens aliens or, or creatures or something the directors described them as possibly something that evolved alongside us that they've always been here yeah. oh so it's like the the, the creatures from the descent sort of <laughs> yeah oh. they've always been here yeah. we're just we're expected to raise their kids for them well, so they can study us mm -hmm. for whatever reason and that's shown with the realtor character that gets better quote unquote <laughs> at, at mimicking humans by the end of it yeah okay so that's kind of what the actual plot of the movie is yeah. okay. mm -hmm. I, I feel like it can be a little muddied at times but i think that's i got a grasp a grasp on that part of it mm -hmm. so before we actually get into breaking the movie open and really going down this fucking rabbit hole mm -hmm. why don't we talk about uh some of the production and the uh post-production of vivarium Anyway, ping pong films. <laughs> oh my god, so many uh, just insane names for production companies. <laughs> I hope when we watch the trailer, it shows all of them. <laughs> Twenty seconds of footage. Yeah, <laughs> the year is 2019. Uh, the director is uh, Lorcan Finnegan. Great name. The movie stars uh, Imogen Poots, uh, Jesse Eisenberg, Iana Hardwick, and Jonathan Aris. It's a very, very small cast. Mm -hmm. The budget was only $4 million, and from what I could find, because this is mostly a streaming film, uh, it only managed to gross $434,000 worldwide. Oof. Seems about right. <laughs> yeah, I think that's that's fair. Uh, it currently sits at a 72% on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, and it was the winner at Cannes um, for the GAN Foundation Support for Distribution and nominated for the Critics Week Grand Prize Award. Wow. Dude, gotta say, Image and Poots had a hell of a year that year. This was one of four movies she had come out that year. Really? Oh, wow. She must be dominating the indie film game. That's that, like, she on that Nick Cage grind, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure. So it was 
It was The Art of Self-Defense, which was also with Jesse Eisenberg. Mm -hmm. This, a movie called Castle in the Ground, which is with uh, the kid from Hereditary and Old. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. And then the Black Christmas remake as well. Yeah. Which I kind of dug, actually. Yeah. I love the Black Christmas remake. Yeah, I, I, I feel like maybe people would have been more into it if it didn't if it didn't have that title yeah. Yeah. it feels it feel, it's a very different movie but yeah i dug it yeah yeah i double featured rise of skywalker and black christmas uh -huh. and i really enjoyed one of those movies <laughs> <laughs> i wonder which one hmm. she was also in uh i mean if we're just keeping the love going she was in greetings from tim buckley with penn badgley mm -hmm. uh and uh, she's fantastic in that movie uh she was in i know this much is true that hbo miniseries yep. yeah which is a great show which, which was deeply deeply depressing yes mm -hmm. it was <laughs> and also just insane that she would be in a relationship with mark ruffalo but whatever right um and, and if we're gonna talk about her best movie it's for me it's green room oh green room's great because holy shit what a fucking movie oh so good i thought you were gonna say pop star <laughs> <laughs> pop star is pretty good too. pop star rules pop star is phenomenal yeah absolutely it it because you know what you know what nathan it mm. is connor for real connor for real <laughs> i haven't watched the trailer for this movie i'm interesting Interested to see how they try to market this movie. I haven't either, so this will be interesting. Uh, they do it by essentially showing the first half of the film. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess that's really all you could show, probably. Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Okay. Here that fucking go. ska music. I know. To ska music can get right the fuck out of movies. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you know what? Out of music in general. <laughs> yeah, just in general. They can fuck off with their trumpets and their checkered bands. <laughs> Number nine is not a starter home. This house is forever. Lee, for a boy. Do you have children? No. It's not exactly what we're looking for. That guy was so strange. Yeah. Wait. No, no, I don't think so. How has she not been a Bond yeah, girl yet? <laughs> she just radiates on the fucking Number screen, nine. man. She's awesome. Did we just do some kind of loop? How have we also, how has Jesse Eisenberg I mean, not been a Bond girl yet? Oh my god, <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> and it turns like this over Could you imagine Daniel Craig trying to romance? Way. Daniel <laughs> Craig would, like, oh, drown him in oil. Hello? <laughs> What's happening? Maybe they'll let us go. What if they don't come? What are we supposed to do? Should we just sit here and wait to die? Man, those scenes after the fire, they shoot the hell out of them. Like, it <laughs> looks so good. Oh, this movie looks gorgeous. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. I love all the miniature work mm -hmm. and, like, the weird stop motion. And, yeah. Oh, the stop motion took me by surprise. Me too. <laughs> We I mean, for a four million dollar movie, this movie fucks. It really does. <laughs> That's fallen. Okay. As of 12, 10, 19. <laughs> it's a good trailer. Yeah. You creepy little mutant. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I did get a good laugh out of that scene. <laughs> I, I also I love Jonathan Aris, who plays the the you know the first Martin. Yeah, uh, I think he's pretty fantastic. Oh yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's on Sherlock, Good Omens, Black Mirror. Yeah. Oh wait, he he plays like the journalist guy in Sherlock, right? Yeah, he, he's um he's like one of the one of the guys that basically like doesn't doesn't trust Sherlock from the beginning. Uh, Anderson, he's like one of the other. Oh. Uh, he's on the forensics team. Oh, he's Anderson that's right yeah yeah oh, that's awesome and then he becomes like his biggest fan <laughs> yeah in season three or whatever he comes like his super fan right before i fall off the show <laughs> <laughs> yep all right so let's start talking about Bavarium. Yeah. So where, I mean, I, I know we're going to say the beginning, but where do we really want to start with this movie? Because I mean, the opening scene just shows you the whole movie right there. Yeah. In microcosm. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Being thrown from the nest mm -hmm. and the, yeah, the cuckoo, like killing the kid, the, the, the baby birds. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm, I'm obsessed with, you know, we've talked about weird, um, lesson plans on the show before yep. and uh you know jo uh, johnny in the dead zone just reading 
a little bit of the raven and telling everyone to go home. Yep. <laughs> uh, this, I'm assuming they pretended to be trees the whole day. Oh, yeah. Like, that's just, that was the lesson. That's all they did for the next two hours. Just <laughs> I love it. Now, I, I, I found this movie hard to watch because, mm. as I said during the trailer, it's hard to focus on anything else when Imogen Poots is on the screen. Not just because she's a gorgeous woman, but because, again, I, she just does something in front of the camera that, like, I can't focus on anything else. She's she's so compelling. Yes. And I, you, you get from from the moment, from the beginning of this movie, all, all, all joking aside, like you, you get like the the mothering instinct from her yes. and the fact that she wants to take care of everyone. Um, and you get from the beginning the Tom just has kind of like the, a case of the fuck arounds all the time. I was like just he, about to say he's, he's just fucking around. That's all he's doing. He watches this tender moment where she like reassures this child who's found a dead baby bird. He's been watching from the tree the whole time. And then he wants to be cute about it. Like He's literally a creep. He's literally up in a tree being a creep. like I like she, and she's she buys into it. Like she's so, uh, in, you know, kind of enamored by him. And I'm immediately like the second that I really you realize that he's been watching this i'm like fuck right off dude yeah, yeah i that was probably the most unbelievable part of this movie is that they're a couple <laughs> yeah like, sure. i'm like what do you what do you see in him like i mean my what? girlfriend is way out of my league too oh, so no, it's not just the out of the league thing it's just I don't, they, they just don't have they don't really connect on anything like yeah. they're he's always either stepping over her whenever they're talking or like yes like when he demands to drive and she's like literally what good is that gonna do yeah no she's right i just can't get over him being a handyman <laughs> that too, right. yeah like i could see him as a janitor sure <laughs> but i don't think he could handle the responsibility of landscaping an entire school <laughs> no, 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 no. And sure. i mean and i could i have to fight that kind of that that I don't know what it, what it is, that fatherly or, like, husbandly duty to, be like, I have to take care of things. Mm. I have to be the one in charge. I have to deal with that, too. But, like, I don't know. It's it's weird because I don't like this character. Oh, but... no. No, Dustin, we're all very aware you are the submissive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah, I would love that. No, I, I, I don't know. I don't like his character, but I also found myself being like, yeah, he's doing the thing that needs to be done. And, <sighs> man, from my point of view, anyway, and I, I'm not saying every that my way is the right way is sure. just how i would react in this situation okay well i don't ever want to get stuck in a vivarium with you oh david <laughs> if i was tom and you were Gemma, i think we'd do pretty well you'd you raise so? the kid yeah. and i'm out there digging holes i could do that <laughs> wait in this scenario does that make me the child yeah, yeah. because you're constantly screaming so there you go <laughs> and you've you've zipped me up in a bag more than once <laughs> <laughs> tucking nathan into his sleeping bags yeah <laughs> But yeah, like uh, the the first note of me being like, okay, I'm in on this movie is, uh -huh. you know, when when Image and Poots is explaining that the birds, you know, why don't they go get their own nest and stuff like that, and, mm -hmm. and the little girl says, I don't like the way things are; they're terrible. And I'm like, yeah, I feel you, little girl. <laughs> they are terrible. <laughs> and this is this is a conversation that I I have had a number of times with my partner throughout the pandemic, where I'm just like, oh no, things aren't ever gonna get better, and she's like, well, no, they're not. If that's how you look at everything. Thing. Yeah, it's it's a very cyclical kind of nihilism. It's hard not to look at things like that. It's though. tough. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I'll I'll go ahead and give you an example. I've since relocated to Florida. Nathan, I'm sure you see this all the time too. Mm -hmm. But I was stuck behind a car today uh, on the way to get dinner with my family, and mm -hmm. I see this all the time. But today, <laughs> today it just got to me. Like uh -huh. it was just uh, a car in front of me with a decal that said "Let's go, Brandon" on it, and I'm uh. like. This is the most cringe fucking thing I have to. Yeah. And I have to see it every fucking day now in Florida. When I was driving to, uh, I mean, we have we have businesses that just full on have Trump banners outside. I'm yeah, just like, that's fucking bold. But oh, I, uh, the, I, the guy three doors down from me has a flag that's with his face on it. This is miss me yet? Oh geez, no, yeah. <laughs> And I have to see it. That's my that's my landmark to get home because I still uh, haven't figured out with my new house where everything is. So I, I'm like, I look for that flag. <laughs> I went to go visit my parents for uh, for Thanksgiving weekend, and there was a there was a flag near them that said Trump 2022, <laughs> and I was like, because that's how elections work. <laughs> that, no, that seems on par for the brand. It I gotta makes say, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, it yeah, makes perfect sense. That, that track. I was like, oh, this is where we're at, where we don't even know years anymore. <laughs> well, I mean, that was like you remember the Time Magazine mockups where he's like trump 2024 2028 i'm like this dude doesn't know how elections work <laughs> <laughs> right this isn't watchmen yeah everything is terrible so that's all that's all i wanted to say yeah and this and this movie perpetuates that well i mean remember guys 
according to the guy, the My Pillow guy, he's going to be reinstated by August. Mm, mm-hmm. When no, when JFK Jr. comes back from the dead and 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 rightfully declares him the winner. Oh, that's right. That's right. <sighs> You know, my sister, my sister lives near like outside of Dallas and she is like she she's constantly stuck in traffic jams from the hundreds of people lined up to receive JFK when he comes back. We used to have a word for these kind of people that is not appropriate for me to say anymore. But mm-hmm. Jesus Christ, I can't fucking deal with it. Uh, we, I call them fuck faces. <laughs> That's probably a much better word than I'm thinking of. But yeah, what everything is terrible, little girl. You were just the motto for 2020, 2021, and beyond. 100%. Like, yeah. she's got it. She's got it pegged. Yeah, like 100%. <laughs> if I identified with any character in this movie, guys, I got to go ahead and tell you, that's my bit part to see. <laughs> I don't like the way things are. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, th- then we get to the second most unrealistic part of this movie, beyond uh-huh. uh, Imogen Poots and Jesse Eisenberg being a couple. Uh, the fact that they can afford to get a house together on a school teacher's budget and a gardener's budget. Sure. <laughs> like, no fucking way. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to watch that episode of House Hunters. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, she he, she teaches school children. He hides up in the trees. They have a budget of $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he keeps his shovels in her trunk. <laughs> Is that a, euphem- that a euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> yep. His multiple shovels right in her trunk. Yeah. No, what what even is those? What even are those shows? I don't get it. No. <laughs> I want to be near the beach. Well, I want to be close to downtown. We'll make it work. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring the beach to us, honey. <laughs> I mean, they had to meet Martin uh, to, yeah. to, to take a look at Yonder, this new development. I, I have two notes back to back about Martin. Sure. And the first note is the first scene he's introduced, I wrote down, boy, I am not liking Martin already. (laughs) Yeah, sure. And then my second note is in all caps, boy, I do not like Martin. (laughs) Because Martin... I think (laughs) his performance is incredible. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. He makes me instantly dislike this guy. So he he did his job. His his little, his little imitation of her when he does like the little clap. Oh, yeah. Is, is fantastic. No, what, what is it when they're, when he shows him the, the, uh, the nursery. He sits down on the bed and then stands up immediately. No, yep. no, no. With, with, oh. She's in the nursery and she says something and then he like repeats it. Yeah. That's when he does his little clap and he goes, not really, or something like that. That's yeah. it. I laughed so hard because I didn't understand. It's what was really good. Well, I, I didn't understand what was going on. And Priscilla's like, you you really shouldn't be laughing at anything in this movie. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm like, but this is amazing. I got a couple of uncomfortable chuckles in this oh, too yeah. because like there's. There's just moments where I'm like, if I don't, if I don't giggle right now, I'm going to get even sicker to my stomach. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I, I guess because I didn't know where I was headed for this movie. So I was... giggle the bad feelings out. <laughs> right. Giggle the bad feelings out. I, I, I was taking everything at face value. So sure. every little like weird like moment or tick, I just thought was the funniest shit ever. The, your your version of this movie would be called Hilarium. <laughs> Hilarium. <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> Also, I mean, I know it's part of it, it, but when they get into the neighborhood for the first time, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what the fuck is up with these clouds? Like this oh, Toy Story man. looking ass wallpaper. Yep. <laughs> it takes the it takes almost like the the Edward Scissorhands aesthetic yes. and cranks it up to 11. There's there's shots of the street that look like a Rankin and Bass like yes. stop motion special. And I fucking love it. Like, let's be honest. This is by far the darkest film Pixar has done. Oh, my God. <laughs> sure. yeah. Yeah. I'm really bold of them to actually go uh, a, a live action, too, yeah, for the first for time. Sure. But How good would it have been like if after the first 14 production cards, <laughs> the Pixar one just popped up? You're like, oh, oh my the lamp just I'm... stomps on a baby bird. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I would have turned the movie off and just pretended like I watched it. There's no fucking way. <laughs> There's no... <laughs> Pixar is oh. Bavarium? No fucking way. I'm not. Uh, I need someone to edit that. That's so good. That's so funny. I, well, I I immediately uh, thought this this made me think of like like the opening of like Fallout, yeah. like yeah. Fallout Four or something. Like this picturesque neighborhood with the clouds that are perfectly in line. Like when they have that scene with Jim and the little boy, and they're like, "What does that cloud look like?" And he's like, "A, a cloud." cloud. And she's like, "Yeah, exactly." Yeah, it's so good. I I, could, I lost my mind. Yeah, <laughs> and the the I think the scene of them getting lost is genuinely like disorienting and unsettling mm-hmm. all the scenes where they're trying to navigate the neighborhood well and terrifying yes because i mean getting lost in the suburbs yeah like whew, buddy right that is hard i mean i'm deep in the suburbs too and i have to use gps just to get out every time <laughs> sure. yeah. yeah so no i that that is haunting like to see every house look exactly the same everything's picture perfect like it 
there's something weird in the human mind about seeing things that are too perfect mm -hmm. and it making you uneasy. I don't, yeah. I don't know. That's an interesting concept, though. I mean, thank God we don't do this podcast in person because I can't just look at Nathan. You know, mm -mm. I get it. I mean, just look at him. Just look at me. Yeah. No, I. I yeah. It, <laughs> just look at him. Also, he just he just called you perfect, Nathan. That, I know. That's a pretty good compliment. <laughs> yeah, he's 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 being modest about it. He, he, Mally has this tradition where he Andrew Lincoln's me at Christmas time, shows uh -huh. up at my door with a sign. <laughs> <laughs> it tells me not to tell my partner. Yeah, it just says, do you want to move in together? We can go to yonder. <laughs> right. Yeah, I have been doing this for years. For years. And now I finally can put a face to the name. It's truly sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I did wear a mask usually. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. Pre-COVID too, really on the cutting edge of things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It used to be a Bane mask. <laughs> no, I, it, it, and that's the thing is like, I think this scene's Ugh. really well done and the argument they have is very uh, realistic. Yeah. And, and like like you, you pointed out that, it, yeah, there is a whole lot of like, you know, what uh, kind of bitching back and forth between the two of them. But it feels very realistic because they're they're pro getting progressively more stressed out. Oh, I think even the strongest couple would have a meltdown at some point. Absolutely. Like they're in this. It's very real. And I don't. Uh, that's why I, I get frustrated with some things that I feel like are kind of like just glossed over. Like they, they don't react surprised when they eat the food and it doesn't have any taste. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Also. Wow, like between COVID when this movie gets released and then them eating food not having taste. It's, oh, it's... no kidding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I thought the same thing. Oh yeah. shit! But it is, it is odd that there's. Yeah, I feel like there's moments where. Like we don't get to see them discover that the kid is aging rapidly. Mm -hmm. We just we just kind of get to that. Oh my god! When she writes down day ninety eight, yeah. I was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I do love that they burn the fucking place down on night two. Oh, yeah, no, I, no. Tom jumps to arson very quickly. That's that's <laughs> where I'm. I'm on his side. I'm like, yes, do this. This is one scene where I'm like, sure, man, let's do this. <laughs> yeah. He's he's got the right idea for a lot of these t these moments. Like when he puts the old box of trash out and sits down with the pickaxe and i'm like what are they doing and then she's like why do we keep doing this are you really i mean they always come whenever we're not looking we're not looking or whatever yeah and i'm like oh that's brilliant yeah beat this whoever comes to pick it up just beat into death with a pick <laughs> yes right i'm like yeah i get it but I, I this is a movie that really begs the question when mm -hmm. it comes to like choices that we make like mm -hmm. this is a very like uh put yourself in their position what do you guys do when the baby shows up Ugh. like what is your first instinct your first reaction i mean my first reaction before i know that it's like not a human being yeah. you know if i just see what looks like a uh you know a defenseless baby i'm like yeah i'll take this fucking thing inside <laughs> you know take care of it but when you see the the, the note that says raise the baby and be released or whatever then i just i just think i'm on tooth and nail records or something yeah i i guess my i guess my thing is i also do this with like the saw franchises or anything like mm -hmm. that or like if i'm put in this position the real short road to suicide for me <laughs> it's a negligible <laughs> oh yeah no i i wouldn't i would be the guy that she finds in the tub oh uh, yeah at the hour mark like i that that is actually nathan's bit part <laughs> <laughs> spoiler like, alert when they try to get out with a car and it doesn't work i'm like all right fuck this mm -hmm. and then the next day when they start climbing over the fences and everything yeah day three i'm going up to the roof and jumping off like same it's so incredibly short for me. <laughs> yeah, no, and that that's the thing is like I I feel like we go from the disbelief to the routine setting in. And and that's probably, you know, a conscious choice, but yeah. as a viewer, I really want to see those moments of discovery. I yes. feel like I'm missing some some of these moments. That would be a much much longer movie. That's yes. true. I would be testing everything. Yeah. Like when he digs the hole the first time, yeah. I was like, I even said to Priscilla, I was like, oh, he's going to come outside the next day and the hole is going to be covered. I thought so too. Yeah. And then it wasn't. And I was like, okay, so that, that means there are some rules in place, some that aren't. I would be testing everything. You know what I mean? I thought that he was going to fall out of the sky. Oh, and just <laughs> land right back like, in the yard? Like yeah. Looney Tunes style. Yeah. yeah. That would have been fucking amazing. Yeah. <laughs> to, to go back to my my first question, then I think my instinct after I've experienced all the stuff I experienced and this baby shows up, mm -hmm. I'd go up to the roof and yeet that baby right the fuck off of it. I'm sorry. Immediately? It's... Even if you don't know what the baby is? <laughs> nope. Because again, I, I, I don't have the patience for... I mean, 
Like, if I get stuck eating a bunch of tasteless food, then a baby shows up. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to go full Gordon Ramsay. Like, finally, some good fucking food. There you go. Oh my See, God. Mally's got the right idea, too. <laughs> well, Na- Nathan, did you not Did you not watch Snowpiercer? I did. <laughs> Babies taste bad. I, well, I was also on Twitter during the, that period where everything was a cake. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like that, that's <laughs> there's probably some truth to that. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, but no, no I... I I don't the same way like there's the whole we don't negotiate with terrorists I don't negotiate with my captors like I'm not gonna play ball like I I just don't have that in me well you're you're just yeah you're just too obstinate I thought you were gonna say I don't negotiate with babies that too that too you're the guy that likes jigsaw hands you a a bone saw and is like you gotta cut your way out of here and you're like no yeah you yelled at me (laughs) and I'm like (laughs) this guy yells after that I go bone saw is ready (laughs) I don't know what any of this shit is and I'm scared (laughs) I I I immediately cut my throat I'm not I'm not doing it I'm not fucking doing it (laughs) I I I don't have the patience to deal with the fuckery with the fuck with the fuck around this whole movie is a case of the fuck around (laughs) I kind of liked this kid at first because Mm -hmm. His impression of Eisenberg is devastating. Oh my! I don't. I, I don't like that this kid's got a deep ass voice. No, thank you. No, it's Not scary. But when he does his little like his his, his impression of Gemma is pretty accurate. Yeah. And then whenever he does Eisenberg, it's like, hey, why are you gonna do this to me? Like, it's so. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty. Good. But it's me doing an impression of Eisenberg. Yeah. I did enjoy the double birds. Yeah. That, that's pretty great. The kid. They, they give the kid and he gives it back to him. It's pretty great. But. Most of my notes, I've got to be honest, I don't have a lot of notes. Mm-hmm. Most of my notes are shit like, you got to murder this young Sheldon looking motherfucker. You just wrote, <laughs> I, I did write young Sheldon down. <laughs> yeah. Was, and then when they, they cut the first time they cut to it, like day 98, I'm like, I wouldn't even make it to day nine. Right. Like, let alone 98. There's no fucking way I would deal with this. Absolutely. No. No. Uh-uh. I mean, the fact that Tom doesn't break the dish of scrambled eggs or the cornflakes or whatever until like four months in yeah like yeah. until like an hour into the movie i'm like no dude that's like day two or three for me i can't i can't deal i can't deal and that's the thing is like it's a it's almost the end of the movie before these two have a conversation about their old lives yeah and how they're dealing with being stuck in here mm-hmm. we just kind of watch them deal with it instead of i don't know there, there's moments where i was just like i i need more of a connection between these two but also I think that this this whole experience illustrates the differences between them and what they what they consider to be important. Yeah, I I think the characters are well crafted. I just I wish we had more scenes with them interacting and really just yeah. I, I this movie could use it's it's not that long. It could use another five to ten minutes of mm-hmm. before like things really go crazy of them just like discussing things and yeah. like like one of the best parts of the movie there's no dialogue but it's pretty deep into the, the them being trapped there and they're both brushing their teeth in the mirror i love this moment yeah and she jokingly you know he goes to spit and she spits before he does and he doesn't even acknowledge it yeah. i'm like that's a good way to let them know the time has passed the relationship is deteriorated yeah like it need we needed more of that because i mean let's be honest tom just kind of dies yeah. yeah he lets himself die basically yeah you just like, oh, he's he's sick. And I'm like, okay. He dustins his way out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just catch some mysterious illness and I'm just fucking dead. Yeah. Uh, no, I would just eat the lamb chops raw and just get like salmonella or something. <laughs> fucking go out. Well, and there there's unspoken moments like that that are so strong. And then there's other weird little bits like the the kid turns on, you know, the kid turns on the TV and they don't like this is the first. Is this the first time anyone's tried to turn on the television for? That's good question because I asked that too before the kid turned it on. Like what? So what do they watch on TV? Is there anything on? Like, right. We need to see them try and like channel surfing to yeah. see, see if they could find a phone, anything, you know? Yeah. I don't know. The, the, the slow fade of their love is done really well. Mm-hmm. Even in that scene where she's like you, the toothpaste bit, like she still smiles at him for a minute and you just kind of see it leave. Yeah. She gets she gets almost embarrassed that she tried, which is gut wrenching. It is. And it's especially like, I, you know, it, it, if you've if you've been I mean, obviously, none of us have been in a situation exactly like like this but if you've been in a situation exactly. where yeah slightly <laughs> different um where where a relationship has uh had a long and agonizingly slow death you know it, it, it's you know I, uh, well i don't want to get too uh personal but he says right before saying something very personal <laughs> no i know uh i don't want to get the super friends uh music this time no, but no, uh, no. we're not there yet we're but no we yet. we've uh you know if you're if you're in a situation where you you feel your partner drifting from you yeah. uh you know it's it, it is that sort of like you fight 
you fight for these little moments of levity. And I see that all over Imogen Poot's performance. I think she's, I just think she's incredible in this movie. Mm -hmm. My current relationship is fine. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) That is, I was going to say, there's, there is a question too of, would their relationship have deteriorated this quickly or to this level if they on the outside right yes if they weren't trapped literally because i feel like you put anybody in a in a situation like this uh, given a long enough period of time yeah you will get to each other's throats like yeah. it's it seems impossibly inevitable well yeah she there's probably no way that she's seen tom body slam a kid before yeah you know <laughs> oh my god God, he spikes that kid like a fucking football. <laughs> <laughs> and it's does. it's day 98, mm-hmm. and they're still kind of together. I feel mm-hmm. like it would happen much quicker than that, the deterioration, if, if they didn't have a strong relationship on the outside first. Mm-hmm. But the movie doesn't let you know that. It doesn't give you really much of anything before shit goes sideways, you know what I mean? But you do, you do have these very, like... Uh, telling moments of just panic Mm -hmm. Uh, you know i mean a a lot of tom's actions seem to come out of a a sense of desperation and her her version of that is when she the 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 look in her eyes when she's howling at the clouds Mm -hmm. is haunting yeah i mean where she's just trying to get all of that fear and anger out of her and she's starting to like adjust to this life and feel a sense of responsibility for the kid yeah i I think that's just that's just something I can't connect with because I oh, can't. That's fair. Having seen the movie up to that point and been in this situation with her mm-hmm. to an extent, I can't put myself in that position of just acceptance. I think mm. that's and again, no fault of the movie. Right. I get it. That's the whole reason there's these two different characters with two different outcomes and two different uh, viewpoints of the situation. I respected Imogen Poots' character. I just could not connect with it. I just that's fair. I didn't get it. Well, I mean, by that point in the movie, you you would be dead. Any oh sure um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 way way earlier. Than whatever date, because the only real mark of a date we get is day ninety eight, yeah. mm-hmm. and then later on you see like when they measured and we see other days. So they've been in there for quite a long time, but we don't really get any time. Yeah, yeah, we don't really get any checkpoints to know how far into it we are. But I mean, they they kind of just stop communicating too when yeah. when the kid goes missing and she asks, you know, she says he's gone missing and he just says, "Well, so have we." Yeah. You know? It's a good line. It's a really good line. He's right. Yeah, yeah. I also like the the they. First start off with the help the the SOS that says, you know, help us or whatever, and then mm-hmm. just turns to fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> yep. It's great. Yeah, this movie was giving me real boss baby vibes the whole time. Yeah. Mm. For, <laughs> your, this is the second movie you've ever seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This one and Boss Baby, the only two movies I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. That in, in House of Gucci. Yeah. <laughs> but all, in all seriousness, there's this movie was it, it made me think of The Lodge. Have yeah. you guys seen The Lodge? I have not. I, I've it's on my it's on my list. It's really good. It also has that sense of being trapped and not being able to escape and mm-hmm. just trying to make sense of things. I actually watched this in the lodge roughly around the same time. Oh wow. <laughs> I, I actually only saw the lodge on a whim because <laughs> funny enough i was gonna go see sonic and it was sold out i was like all right i guess i'll see this movie that i have heard nothing about and right it's really really good it was like one of my favorites of that year so if, if you like vivarium check out the lodge it's not my pick me up by any means and if you can't rent the lodge the sonic the hedgehog currently on amazon prime <laughs> yeah i would certainly hope the lodge was not your pick me up because no, no, no. i'm pretty sure that was on this season's schedule at one point and it I was. replaced it with something else it was <laughs> that's right yeah yeah but be on the lookout future episode the lodge so uh you know no i just did this movie man it when it got to the stop motion animation i was i was like dude you gotta warn me before you do some shit <laughs> oh yeah when he when he flicks the cigarette and it mm-hmm. burns the astro turf it looks like something out of uh the first evil dead i oh, love yeah. that shit it's it was great and and yeah i I don't know, man. I there's just so many rules that that would be the part I'd be more interested in is just figuring out the world and the limitations. Right. If I was Tom, rather than like when it's day ninety eight and they're eating eggs and he's already got the routine of like let me dump my trash in the box, put the mm-hmm. box outside. I'm like, there's a demarcation point there though, where there, there at one point when he gets up and he's like fully not interested in talking about it anymore he yeah. gets up and just sets his plate on the counter he yep. doesn't dump it which yep. i thought was a, a nice little touch in the background yeah yeah mm-hmm. we also get that great scooby-doo chase yeah uh, where she's following him uh, around and... oh my god that's exactly what i thought of too i was like if you put like some 60s like almost beatles-esque or monkeys music to this it's exactly <laughs> sure. Scooby-Doo. i love it <laughs> But it looks great. Yeah. The production design in this movie is fantastic. Oh, I, I just I kept being surprised by how good this movie looked. I think it, everything is great. I like the like camera works good. Mm-hmm. Great shot composition. Mm-hmm. Great color. Great lighting. Everything. Anyone else notice that the director of cinematography just had a one 
word name. No. His name's just McGregor. Oh, awesome. so mysterious. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I know, right? It's it's Connor McGregor. <laughs> He's the seal of uh, cinematographer. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what else this uh this uh DP has done because that now I'm curious. A lot of short films and documentaries. It looks like. Oh, okay. Interesting. I mean, this movie looks stunning. I agree. It looks it's incredible for four million dollars. Holy shit. He, he also did a pop smoke music video. Oh, oh hell yes. That's awesome. The uh, yeah, when the fog sets in, it, it was very unnerving and and like I, I thought for a minute like we were she wasn't gonna find her way out of it and mm-hmm. uh, reminded me of the other very foggy movie that we we all saw this weekend. Mm-hmm. Lots of fog in the house of Gucci. It's um it it is interesting like the camera work and everything and the way it's edited it does it does lure you into the same sense of here's what they're feeling like mm-hmm. everything being disoriented a loss of time yeah you don't really understand what's happening but you're just going with it because you have no other choice and i man i love this scene where they discuss how they met and it is the most mundane conversation Mm -hmm. but it's so important because they don't have that here yeah you know like the little things like here's what we had for breakfast here's how i said hi to you Mm -hmm. do you remember what wind felt like i mean good lord that was a great that was a great moment do you remember the wind i just remembered how much i loved it and i didn't realize i'd miss it and stuff like that it's great this is like one of their strongest scenes together and i i wish i wish there was a little bit more of this sprinkled throughout Mm -hmm. because there's so much i mean there's so much that's unspoken which i i appreciate but there are there are just these little these little moments of discovery and reconnection that I, I wish that we had more of. Well, there's also we didn't really talk about it, but the kid come, staying up late at night to watch oh. like the TV pattern and everything. Yeah. And and also, look, with this kid in the house, you got to close the damn door if you're going to have sex. Like, yeah. You know, this kid's going to be watching. Yeah. It reminded me of that eastbound and down scene. The let, let the let the boy watch. Yeah, exactly. There's a there's a more upsetting alternative to it uh, when she crawls under the house. Oh, yes, yeah, there is. Yeah, man. There are a couple. Of, <laughs> there are a couple of reactions. That noise is not me. What you think it is, by no, the way, if not, you haven't it's, seen it's the movie. Applause. It's applause. <laughs> Imogen Poots has a few reaction moments in this movie that are like that genuinely like terrified me when mm-hmm. she when she asks him to do his impression of the the person he met today and he yep. like puffs up his throat yep and she just freaks out it's it's it, her reaction to the body bag is harrowing yep. mm-hmm. and man when i when he pulls up the sidewalk i guess oh my god like, yeah it's an too. incredible shot i my notes are literally just in all caps. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God. Yeah, it was. And, and he, the way he screeches and like has like that body dysmorphia, like the way he crawls. This is when she finally does what you would have done the whole movie, which Gone is she grabs axe. the pick and hits yeah. him in the face with it. I, yeah. I, I mean, I literally wrote down, I'd be going full Brad Pitt at the end of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood on this kid. <laughs> like, I'm not kidding. Like, yeah. I'm not kidding. Uh, <laughs> if only she had had a can of dog food. Exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. And he was on a horsey earlier. <laughs> when, like when when tom's like f- like when he had it with this kid yeah and he's like fuck it we're starving it and i'm like finally some fucking sense uh. in this movie and but again i just i can't relate but i get it then jim is like you gotta let him out yeah i i she she doesn't want to be party to like killing someone either like yeah. even 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 if she's not convinced that it's worth keeping alive she's yeah. still just like i'm a person i can't do this i get it but i don't get it it's my problem <laughs> i feel that i mean th- that's the that's the thing about this movie is that it it's operating on a bunch of different levels it, it inspires conversation i mean like i've I, like i said i've been thinking about what i would have done in this situation all day since i watched it and, and then there's not even the, the part of the discussion we've even encroached upon which is like what is the movie what the, what's the movie really talking about is it talking about you know millennials and or the in the housing market is it talking about existentialism like what is what there's so many different if, if this movie kind of feels like mother where you can like apply your own interpretation to it and, sure. and it, it could be true to that aspect but yeah i agree but for me that's what it felt like the big thing was like this is what it's like to like be a millennial and having to deal with the housing market and like the expectation like because millennials get blamed for everything like we get blamed for not having enough kids not buying diamonds it's (laughs) our fault the last duel is bombing us For some reason, if only that. If but we 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 got avocado toast instead of raising alien child. Oh yeah, and if you really want to eat or have healthcare, don't buy the new iPhone and shit right. like that. Like it. That's what it felt like to me. Is like we get blamed for everything and we're inevitably trapped. Like 
you know it's that well and it's it's the it's the cyclical nature of capitalism yes. and and the expectations placed on us by society and the and the you know the 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 crushing feeling of not your life turning out to be something that it, you didn't think it was supposed to be mm-hmm. i mean he literally he literally is fine to make her play the role of mother mm-hmm. he's like if that's what you want to do that is your he essentially he may as well tell her that's your job as the the woman in the family unit. You know, it is it's the nuclear family. It's the, like, yeah, it's a critique of the nuclear family. And it's fascinating to me. They're literally having it imposed upon them. Like, here is your child. Here is your house. Yeah. You have to raise this child. You have to. It's essentially the movie version of Once in a Lifetime by the Talking Heads. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> this is not my beautiful house. Yeah. This is not my beautiful <laughs> wife. How did I get here? Uh, no, I, I agree. It's. It, like I said, I, this movie is very similar to Mother like that, where you can mm-hmm. apply whatever whatever you want to put onto it, and it, it kind of works. And that's, that's the brilliance of it. And much like Mother, I when I finished watching Mother, I was like, I don't, I didn't enjoy that at all, but I fuck with this movie. Yeah, for <laughs> me, I, I may rewatch this movie once again for the rest of my life, and that'll be enough. I agree, yeah. Same way I feel with Mother. It's a masterpiece. It's just not... It's not an entertaining movie, so. When your son brings home his first girlfriend, you're just gonna be like, oh, kids, you should watch this. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> this is what awaits you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gather around, everybody. This this is gonna be this is gonna be the Campbell household Christmas movie. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Everybody get your get your magic pajamas. Let's light the fire, watch some vivarium. How about it? <laughs> While we put up the Christmas tree. Oh wait, Priscilla put it up five weeks ago. Uh-huh. <laughs> Exactly. Now, I I think what you're about to say, Nathan, is when we get to the production design of when she crawls under the under the street, yeah. right? Yeah. And she sees all of the houses that have kind of like congealed together. Yeah. Like she's going through this kind of multi-dimensional space. Uh, that's all the previous tenets of number nine, right? Is that what we're led to believe, or is this? Sh- I th- I think it's all happening at the same time. Oh, yeah, that's what I okay. was thinking. I, I think that this is some kind of yeah, this is some kind of like almost honeycomb of dimensions. <laughs> yeah, that she's like falling through. Just Im- just imagine she falls through one of the floors, and it's just a shot of like the three of us trying to raise a fucking baby. <laughs> it's like so, it's like the Twilight Zone version of three minutes and a baby <laughs> I was gonna say it's the three of us recording this episode oh my god <laughs> she just keeps going <laughs> with a baby with a baby as a special guest but is this do you think this is all in within house number nine or these are all the empty houses around them that they just can't see them nah bro that's like house 32 yeah house yeah seven, i think house so 16 interesting they're all there just at in different you know pocket universes basically yeah this could work as like as a, as a good series yeah like different interpretations of what each of these households went through uh this could work as a fantastic reality show <laughs> <laughs> sure actually you know what it you know what it made me think of? You guys watch Room 104, right? Yeah, uh-huh. It, it's very similar, I think, in concept. Is you could do, you could almost kind of tell any kind of genre story you want to tell with something like this, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, you could do a comedy, you could do a romance. That'd be kind of interesting. So basically, we're just pitching Black Mirror. Well, I'm just pitching Room 104 again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Room 104, just with Jesse Eisenberg wearing a different mustache in every episode. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> okay, n- now I'm in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't tell me there were mustaches involved. <laughs> There's some great visual work here, some great like practical work, like her sinking through the floor looks incredible. Oh, yeah, so great. And the colors, every room is colored. And yeah, we get that really disturbing sex scene with the kid watching. And that's like the colors are so simple. Just like every time she falls to a different house, the color changes. Like yeah. it's mm-hmm. so simple, but it's so effective. Well, it's all like red, blue, green. What is that shuddering effect on the camera? I like what I, I don't know how that's achieved, but whenever I see it in a movie, I'm always just like, fuck, I love this. They're just doing some kind of tilt with the lens, essentially, is all it is. Is that what it is? Yeah. Oh yeah. man, it's so good. They use they use that before and like they use usually in like war movies and stuff too like when things are disorienting so. when someone's disoriented yeah yeah, yeah. After, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's incredible it's great and it and you feel her confusion and horror and the the sort of half recognition of the woman like at crying at the kitchen table who see, sees her but maybe doesn't completely see her is really interesting i was gonna say that that's they could have done something similar to that with like um, how they did in Hereditary with like the shimmering light. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like to represent Paymon and stuff. I, I wish they would have had like a moment where maybe we see that person's perspective. Or or no, just like Imogen Poots thinks she sees something and it's not really there. And that's mm. maybe somebody else kind of 
crossing through the threshold like that. Uh, yeah, because that was yeah. the thing. That was the thing too. Is I couldn't tell if the woman crying at the table did see her or she thought she saw her. It certainly seems that way. Yeah. Like maybe she sees like a, 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 a yeah. A, some sort of like remnant of her. Yeah. Um, there's a, I mean, the, David Bruckner's newest movie, the night house does some really interesting shit like that, where it plays with uh, silhouettes and, and tricks of the light to mm-hmm. show two people, you know, occupying the same space who can't see each other. Interesting. Yeah. I would I definitely check that out for sure. Another movie that does that, that I actually just rewatched yeah. and still kind of holds up is uh, the first silent Hill movie. Oh yeah. It's still pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's some Silent Hill vibes here. Lots of fog. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Jesse Eisenberg has a pyramid head. Mm -hmm. Uh, He also rips the flesh off that woman and throws it at the church doors. So I couldn't believe he did that. Yeah, I I was like, wow, that's what I would have done to that baby right away. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Jesus (laughs) Christ. Mally, I figured you'd be all in on murdering this kid. That's yeah, all when, you're Mally, about. when Mally's like, tone it down, Dustin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to repress Mally. That's all it is. <laughs> well, it's here's the thing. It's not a real baby. That's yeah. true. It's not. So thank you, thank you. That that's that's why I'm not into it. It's a cake. <laughs> oh, he's a cake. Is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I oh, know the, the the score that's in this scene, especially, oh, fucking yeah. is, is incredibly good. So good. Some really cool, like kind of like loop stuff mm-hmm. uh, that I that I really dug. Which again, I, every time someone said number nine, I just thought of Revolution Nine by the Beatles. Like oh, yeah. it just felt like I don't know if that was intentional or not. But <laughs> number nine. I love that her last words are "I'm not your fucking mother," and he mm-hmm. makes her repeat it. I love that she says that over and over. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> uh, like, good for you. Yeah. Like, uh, man, this this I was so just so, so distraught. Like, I uh, you know, he tells her like her duty is to raise her son and die. Uh, and again, it like hammers in that expectation that society places on you, and yes. and the fact that like she's she's been relegated to just being forced to be a, an incubator basically and yeah. it's it's awful i think that's 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 what really left a bad taste in my mouth which it's supposed to right. by the time the credits rolls you're not supposed to be like well that was a good movie right. <laughs> but all right man really enjoyed that let's go get some tacos yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> i the, just the you know, we've talked about it a lot this season, but the nihilism of this movie, it just Oof. like nothing matters. Yeah. And it and that's it really got under my skin of being like, well, what was the point? <laughs> like I, I, I a movie doesn't have to have a message. It can just be entertaining or it can just be thought provoking. Yeah. But I don't know. Something about this movie it just rode me the wrong way. Or I'm like, well, OK, well, we went through all of that. I watched Jesse Eisenberg die. I watched uh, Imogen Poots die. And then I'm seeing, which is the end of this movie, which we can recap here in a second. But yeah. I'm seeing that the cycle is just going to keep going. And I'm like, but what's the point? I think that is the point that like the world, the world, cho- the world chews you up and spits you out. That is the point, bro. And that's fine. That could be the point. Then you get stuffed in a fucking drawer. <laughs> Oh, we can get all your bolds broken. <laughs> right. <laughs> what wild, wild. Honestly, when I die, just fucking roll me up and put me in a filing cabinet. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to make you in a little taquito man. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> no, I just, I, I don't know. I think maybe just movies just didn't, it just wasn't for me. Sure. And, and that's fine. That's fine. I just, I don't know. Maybe it also could just, the time it hit me. Maybe it was. No, again, this movie made me feel like shit, but yeah. I kind of fuck with it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. I, I'm in the same boat. I would recommend this movie, which we'll get there at the end, but mm-hmm. very caveat heavy. <laughs> sure. Just wait until your kid starts aging like 10 years and a month. <laughs> Uh, um, well, Mally, since we're at the end and this is your movie, mm-hmm. um, why don't you recap what specifically happens at the end of Avarium? All right. So after the uh, magical mystery tour that <laughs> goes on, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the MMT, sure. Like it just like fucking like drains her physically, emotionally. Like you can like see as she's going through each level, like she's like deteriorating. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like she just is like laying in bed and the child which is now a full-grown man yeah Mm -hmm. grogu Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's just kind of like having a discussion with her like what like why am i here like what's my purpose yeah she's just and he's basically just like the mother raises the child and then she dies yeah and then he zips her up in a bag and she's like i am not your fucking mother Mm -hmm. he chucks her into the fucking hole Mm -hmm. fills the hole and then the hole just magically disappears which was a nice little shot yeah that's a great effect yeah um and then he drives back to the real estate office where martin the original real estate guy is like just fucking got gone full like 
vegetable patient. Just, mm. ah. Yeah. <laughs> and like fucking Denzel and the bone collector. <laughs> and he like takes his name tag, puts it on, rolls him up to like a fucking burrito, mm-hmm. puts him in a filing cabinet and sits at the desk. Mm-hmm. And then another couple comes in and the whole thing is going to happen again and again again mm-hmm. that little girl is gonna be in the woods <laughs> time is a flat circle again he just goes full rust coal with it you know uh-huh. <laughs> and then movie just fucking ends. yep yeah with a sick xtc needle drop like, <laughs> yes. that song rules <laughs> much better than the sky uh-huh. it's making up for how bad the ska music is earlier <laughs> right. in the movie oh my god <laughs> yeah. yeah which let's be honest like say what you will about Tom and Gemma, but like they're both big ska fans. Yep. Mm-hmm. They got what's coming to them. Yeah. <laughs> Let this be a lesson to you, all you fucking ska heads out there. This will happen. <laughs> Mark my words. Keep it up. See what happens. Keep it up. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, no. See? God damn Nathan? it. Nathan? <laughs> oh, no. They got me. <laughs> okay. Well, is there anything else we want to really talk about when it comes to Vivarium, or do you think we've covered all the ground? All the ground we are allowed to cover <laughs> before we come get looped back in again on it. <laughs> I, uh, man, I, I, th- that's all of my notes, except that uh, I would like to borrow a segment from my other show. Oh, that's a scary movie and recommend a better title for this film. Oh, OK. Oh, please. The Parent Trap. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> That's pretty good. Holy shit, that's great. Oh, uh, but actually, you know, once I looked it up, I was like, yeah, Bavaria, pretty spot on. I mean, that kind of tells you yes. yeah. if you know what that word means, you know what the movie is about mm-hmm. right away. So, like, it's not a secret. Yeah, I thought it was like a cream filling, yeah, but yeah. it's not. I'm just a fucking dummy. <laughs> okay. Well, if there's nothing else to talk about with the movie, mm-hmm. we can talk about one of my favorite segments. Yeah. Uh, Prop Cop. So, um, Mally, again, this is your movie. What is the prop that you most want to take from the movie Vivarium? I honestly do not want anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fair. I get it. But like, you don't want the food. It has no taste. Right. Yeah. And, you know, usually when we record these episodes, I'm hungry. Yeah. And I will admit, I'm starving right now. But, like, I want to, you know, give me some, like, you know, salt the pork or something. I don't fucking know. I, you know what? I will say I, that's another piece of the production. Does we should do a drinking game for every time I say I will say on this show? Because I'm I'm allowed to talk. I don't know why I do that, but I uh, cut his mic. Can someone cut Nick's microphone? I I love how the fake food looks. Like when they're unpackaging it, mm-hmm. it almost looks like you'd see it in like an easy bake playset or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, mm-hmm. like the lamb chops and the shrimp cocktail and all yeah, that. like the clearly plastic lamb chop was pretty incredible but you know what i gotta say i enjoy the um the graphic design work of just basic just milk juice i'm like i (laughs) i love that style sure like just plain i don't want it to be loud and you know i i just want things to just say what they are like the government you know oriented or something (laughs) okay the guy who spent 45 minutes talking about dorito bags on our (laughs) yeah (laughs) on our paranormal activity episode doritos are the exception okay doritos are the exception to the rule everything else just put a white box with a black label on it that says what it is (laughs) jesus well i actually did like the little model house that they see when they go into the to the realtor store Mm. i thought that would be pretty cool to have just a little tiny model house that'd be cool enough uh, what about you, Nathan? Um, I don't know. I, I'd like to, I want the TV, sure. just like the programming on it. Just oh, put okay. that on, <laughs> put on like a John Carpenter record and space out. Ooh, there you go. There you go. I mean, I will say that was like, that had to be what, a 50 inch? Yeah. It's pretty good. Like that's not a bad TV. Pretty yeah. good TV. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, you only get that channel, the the, the test pattern channel, but well, you know. well, that we know of, we never see him try to change the channel. They could be right. football on the other one and then like anime one after that. That's true. Like. I mean, if if you do a bunch of shrooms, like that would be great. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think I could safely say we can skip bit part, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We we would just be we would just all be one of the other families. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Either the guy that slits his wrist or <laughs> I will point out that the in the credits that that couple that is being watched is referred to as sex couple. Cool. That's a cool mm-hmm. man. We got to keep a running tab of like the coolest like credits. <laughs> sex couple in the jaded three is a pretty good lineup. <laughs> sex couple, the jaded three, fuck pig. We fuck got some good pig. ones this season alone. Yeah, that, make that tour flyer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, come see the. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, next on Not Fast, we've got Fuck Pig. <laughs> this is Potato Dick. Fuck Pig and the Sex Couple. Ooh, that, that's, that does roll off the tongue pretty nicely. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. You know what else rolls off the tongue? Silver Linings. Ooh. Yeah. Do they? they, they well, Sometimes. Not very, not very well, I'll say. <laughs> I will allow both of you gentlemen to go first, then. Okay. Ooh. I have... I have a very Bally answer for mine. Oh, okay. hell yeah. So, uh, I mean, this is all I got at the end of this movie, fellas. Uh, technically, they did get a home. <sighs> they were house shopping, and they, they got a home. They did. In this market? Yeah, it's, I was just about to say, in, in the, the housing market, we all know, it's, it's shambles. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. So, that's that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, I mine's pretty fucking bleak. Uh, they're free. Yeah. They got, they got out, sort of. Yeah. Uh, Mally? Uh, that child is going to die eventually. Yeah. And soon, as, as presumably. That, yeah, very soon, apparently. We we know that. Yeah. He, he's gonna get fucking rolled up like a fucking gordita, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really all, you, all we can say. All three of those are kind of like the best options. Yeah. <laughs> this might, I think this might be the bleakest ending from the season. Hmm. Yeah. Like, it's up there. Yeah. It's it's pretty high. I uh, we got we got a couple movies left. That's we'll true. See. Oh yeah, that's very true. Yeah. No, I, I think I think that's uh, as valiant of an effort as we can possibly have on this movie because sure. it, it, there is really not. I mean, just look at the cast alone. It's like three people, mm -hmm. and two of them are dead by the end of it. So yeah, you know, uh, it's there's not much else to go on. So with that, uh, if that did not satisfy you, listener, if that is not a good silver lining, if you don't think it's good enough. Don't worry. Mm -hmm. We have uh, what we like to call the double feature, a.k.a. the pick me up movie alternative. This is where we do a pairing, as we mentioned, a double feature uh, to go along with Vivarium to help balance things out a little better if if our silver linings do not do it for you. So, Nathan, how about we start with you? What sure. did you pick to do as a double feature with Vivarium? So I was trying to remember. I feel like I might have already said this one earlier this season, but mm -hmm. I couldn't be fucked to go back and <laughs> listen to mm -hmm. make sure. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want another solid locked room mystery type movie, uh, why not watch? Please don't say what I'm clue. <laughs> OK, OK, good. <laughs> I thought you were going to take mine. <laughs> oh, okay, fantastic. Yeah, no, if you want to laugh after this, give give Clue a watch. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that I also have a, a kind of stuck in a loop kind of movie that mm. I think was a great movie. I think it's underrated. It's fun. And it kind of deals with similar situations, but like the fun aspects of it. Check out uh, Palm Springs. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which was a great movie. Yeah, I really dug that. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. I loved that movie. It was really good. Really good. Good call. Mally, what about you? I actually have two. Oh. Because let's be honest, you might need two. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. So my first one, if you want another movie about being trapped, mm. I'm going to go with This is the End. Mm. Nice. Okay. An often recommended movie on this podcast, for sure. Yeah, very much so. Mm -hmm. Um, And then if you want another movie about being forced into parenthood, <laughs> how about the Adam Sandler classic, Big Daddy. Oh, <laughs> nice. Great call. That is good. Yeah. That is good. Absolutely. Yeah. Hip Hop Anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> Hip Hop Anonymous. It's my MC name. Damn you. You give him all the easy ones. <laughs> Maybe Rob Schneider's only good performance. In the movie. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's so weird that there was like a cottage industry that was just like Rob Schneider is this thing. Mm -hmm. Like that's just the, that was like the how everything was marketed. Oh, I told you guys I, I had I was literally forced to watch his stand up. Right. No. Yeah. When, In what situation were you forced to do that? <laughs> So, so he was shopping for a house. <laughs> and I got stuck in a loop, and the only goddamn thing on the TV was real Rob on Netflix. <laughs> Rob Schneider, watch Rob Snyder and be released. <laughs> <laughs> Never. That's immediate suicide. <laughs> you know, I, I, the film school I was at, uh, they were filming for that show actually for that netflix show of his uh -huh. and i never saw it i'm assuming it was something similar to like a seinfeld where like there was the show but then also little bits of his stand-up in it mm -hmm. and i was part of the class i was in we had to go watch him do stand-up because they needed a crowd <laughs> bummer and if you if, if you've never seen rob schneider do stand-up Yes, you have. Just just <laughs> think about it, and that's pretty much his set. Okay. So there you go. No need to uh, to get, get involved and actually go venture looking for that kind of stuff. Rob Snyder is the anti-vaxxer. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, my God. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure 
I haven't looked. I'm sure he has released a special mm. with something along the lines of the title being like Rob Schneider. Do I need to say it? Oh boy. Or or like Rob Schneider, or like here we go again, or something <laughs> like that. You know, it's it's gotta exist. I'm not gonna look it up. Hold your applause. Yeah, yeah. Here's the deal. Am I the crazy one? Yeah. Here's the deal. That's it. <laughs> That's the name of it right there. <laughs> Whether you like it or not. Yep. Yep. Well. I gotta ask the question, mm. do we recommend Vivarium? Yes, but make sure you're uh, mentally prepared to be bummed out. Okay. Like, I, more than any other movie this season, I think, this one, this one, I had a, a, just a, I was sick to my stomach while I was watching it, and not because I was, like, not digging it, but because I just... I don't know, it hit something primal, yeah. you know? Uh, I, I would definitely recommend giving it a watch. Mally? Uh... Yeah, fuck it. Like I recommend, like I recommend this to like annoying couples all the time. Yeah, as long as, as long as you're not dating Mally, go ahead and watch this. <laughs> Mally's like wedding crashers, but just like trying to break couples up. <laughs> just, let me just break in there. Real quick. The fixer. Yeah, he's like, watch Buried, and then if if you need to pick me up, watch Vivarium right after. <laughs> Mally Moore is match breaker. <laughs> I'd watch that. I'm not going to lie. I'd watch that. 100%. <laughs> I would say I'm not sure. Okay. That seems about right, honestly. <laughs> I would say as a film, I would recommend it because it is a very well-made movie, mm -hmm. uh, well-directed, well-acted, everything. But I think it, if you're into a mystery that does not have a straightforward answer mm. and is much more ambiguous about its messaging, then yes. Mm -hmm. But you have to put the work in for this movie. Not a lot of work, but you do have to put some work in. Sure. That being said... For general audience members, like if you were just going to the theater and like, what are they showing? <laughs> like a fucking psycho, like those people that do that. Like, yeah. Um, the people that just show up to the theater and have no no idea what they want to see or what time anything starts. If you do that and you're like, oh, I'll see this movie of Varium, you That's so strange to me. Yeah. I can't see this being being uh very appealing to your average moviegoer. Sure. So I I don't know. Yeah. I needed a nap after this movie. Yeah. Like I, I, I finished watching it. Then I went grocery shopping and I was literally like at the farmer's market, like going through like pomegranates and just <laughs> thinking like, what's the fucking point? Like, I'm, <laughs> I have to peel these. Like, I mean, you're brave <laughs> enough to get into a car right after this movie for sure. Right, right. right. <laughs> oh, wait, I actually fuck. I forgot. I had a third pick me up alternative. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. If you want to watch another movie about parents raising a quickly aging, <laughs> child oh, um mm -hmm. check out francis ford coppola's film jack okay oh my gosh okay. wow what a wild watch uh, <laughs> possibly a contender for this show <laughs> Mel likes to do that a lot <laughs> yes a deeply <laughs> deeply depressing movie all right well have we uh sealed the deal in bavarium are we zipped the bag up i think so okay crunch roll them up baby <laughs> all right well um listener if you have some thoughts on bavarium uh we may be interested to hear them. You can send them over to the Silver Linings playlist at gmail.com mm -hmm. or you can uh, DM us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter where you can also follow us where we uh, post every day um, some selects from the show as well as some other things. Or you can uh, find us over on our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Um, we ask that you uh, please subscribe wherever you're listening to us at. And if you haven't already, leave us a, a rating and some feedback. You can let us know how we're doing on the show. Mm -hmm. Find us on eHarmony. Find us on eHarmony, <laughs> sure. sure. <laughs> we got that. We got that silver linings profile up you know it's, it's rocking farmers only yeah all that good stuff the neighborhood app yeah farmers only um, <laughs> we had we, ha we had to get on farmers only exclusively for nathan <laughs> yeah, yep he's got to have his overalls and his plaid on yeah <laughs> thank you um if you haven't already please at least some feedback um oh i already said that no if you haven't already let your friends and family know about us yeah that'd be uh greatly appreciated leave more feedback yeah, yeah. more feedback yeah Guys, we have three episodes left for the season. Wild. It's only three. Thank God. So, Nathan, <laughs> you're, you're, uh, you're picking uh, next week's episode. Yeah. And this is going to be a first for us. Yeah. The type of movie we're covering next week. So I'm excited. I'm, I actually know what we're doing next week, and I'm so excited. Yay. <laughs> Me too. I just rewatched it right before we recorded this, and I can't wait to talk about it. Hell but yeah. in order to do that, we need to have a clue for what we're talking about. Sure. So what you got? Next week, your angel of death awaits. Oh, that's a great clue. Uh, <laughs> I can't. Uh, it's so great that we're going to talk about Angel Heart again. Oh, my God. We're re-upping it. Angel Harder. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, 
let's get the fuck out of here uh if we can if we can escape if, if the podcast will let us and we don't end up right i'm gonna do my best what if we come back next week and we just have to talk about vivarium again oh no <laughs> and we get a little note that says talk about the movie again and get released <laughs> and I, I start every episode by woofing yeah. <laughs> uh, I, i'm gonna let you know i'll be dead mid-episode next time if we have to do this movie. <laughs> um speaking of death rest in peace oh bill happy birthday moms there you go happy, happy birthday mom <laughs> any all moms out there and dads and grads yeah <laughs> and dads and grads and, and, and rest in peace eddie murphy and <laughs> as always excelsior zip zip, zip. <laughs> i like zip <laughs> Oh, for not the for the right reasons though, not like the the gross kind of zip. We should say, what like a zip, you know. <laughs> I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you talk your way out of this one. Okay, <laughs> guys, hold on. Get, grab a chair. Sit with me. Let me explain. <laughs> so, <laughs> Excelsior. Excelsior. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving all of that in. Good. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Woof, 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 woof. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.